Hey guys, so you may have noticed I did not do a video of this fan on the test rig, and uh, there's kind of two reasons for that. Um, I guess they're kind of the same reason. So, um, I don't, the only complete ERS I have that's not from the museum or in the museum is the one that you've seen with the uh, drum light kit that matches the sideband. Uh, and one of the blade arms is bent. It's got a few other issues. And uh, I think that one's really cool. But the only place I would install it in my home would be like a rec room or someplace with, you know, wood paint. It looks very dated with that light kit. And so, um, like the only place in this house I would possibly put it would be the music room. But I don't like it enough to replace the solder there. Um, plus, I, I need to either fix or replace the bracket, etc., etc. So... <clears throat> I didn't think I had an ERS to install, and then I realized I had this motor, and like most of the ERS motors that I've purchased, um, the switch mechanism was damaged in shipping. I, I mean, every time I buy one of these or trade one of these, I always beg the person sending it to me, or FedEx, or whoever's packing it, I give them detailed instructions on how to protect the switching mechanism, and uh, no one... Other than that one with the with the drum light kit, no one's ever done it well enough for it to survive shipping. So my thing was, okay, Metal Pete and I will fabricate a switch mechanism. And then I realized if I'm installing it in a smart home, I'm going to bypass the switch anyways. So um, that's how I realized, okay, well, you know what? I can make a complete one then. Because all the ones I have except for that one have a bad switch. This one was a motor... Just a motor, I think. I think these are the blades and brackets off my Sunbeam, which use the same blades and brackets. And then it's a Newtone um, sloped ceiling canopy that gave me a, you know, almost as good a clearance as I'd get with the two-piece canopy that came with these. Uh, and I thought it looked pretty appropriate. It looked pretty similar to the canopy that, canopy that would have come. So um, that's one of the reasons why I didn't do a test video of it. The other reason was that... When I pulled it out and started working on it, you know, part of the pro while I had it apart, I installed the smart switch uh, in the motor housing. Um, because my thing was, I already had the motor housing apart to remove the, uh, the switch mechanism. And uh, I had to oil the bearings and do a couple other things. And I, my thing was, well, while I'm in there, I'm going to put the... Uh, cause Without doing those things, it wouldn't have ran. And um, while I was in there, I installed the smart switch. And so with the smart switch on it, you can't put it on the test rig uh, other than just using the smart switch and testing the current draw. But I didn't need to know the current draw, you know. And I already knew that the capacitor values would be fine. So, um, yeah. So that's why it didn't get it. It didn't get a video on the rig. If I would have had time, I would have done one anyways. But... Um, Pete and I were pressed for time, so, um, here, this is my official video of it. Um, so these are a childhood fan of mine, but I did not realize that. Um, I'll tell you the whole story, I probably told this in a previous video. So, there's a suburb of Madison, Wisconsin, called Verona, Wisconsin. And when I was a kid in, like, elementary school, I had a friend that lived out there. I don't remember her name. But... Um, I think I was one of those cases where I was friends with her because my mom was friends with her mom. And so, like, you kids just play together. You know, and kids will do that. Kids will play with anybody. So, um, we, uh, there was a nice beach out in Verona, Wisconsin. And what we would do for our play dates would, um, we would meet for lunch, usually at A&W Root Beer one of the few times we actually got to eat out and get fast food and then we'd go to the beach and the A&W Root Beer had in the atrium two 42 inch originals with horseshoe brackets on sloped canopies that's where I saw those and that's why that's a childhood fan and across the street from the A&W Root Beer was a uh, Hardee's restaurant if you're not from the Midwest Hardee's is the same as Carl's Jr. And uh, they had one other name. I can't remember the name. But it was just, you know... Oh, what is the other name? You know what? I can, I, I'm here in my living room. I got my computer. I can Google it. Um, 
So in Hardee's had a layout that was kind of similar to a lot of fast food restaurants where like the dining area was like an L shape. You know, you think about a lot of older McDonald's. Hold on a second, let me look this up. Hardee's, Carl's Jr. There was one other name for it. Interesting, it's not telling me. Oh, well, I'm not going to waste time here. You get the idea. So they had, you think of the way like McDonald's and Burger King used to be, you know, and um, there would be the counter where you ordered and the kitchen behind it, and sometimes there'd be a little bit of a dining area uh, in front of where you ordered, and sometimes it'd just be waiting in line, or sometimes part of the atrium would be there. And then immediately to the right of the kitchen, if you were facing the counter, there would be a, a dining area that would go all the way to the back of the restaurant. And Hardy's layout only had one fan in most of the restaurants. And it was always adjacent to the kitchen. So it wasn't like in the center of the restaurant or anything like that. It would be, you know, um, there would be like a little separate seating area right next to the kitchen and then other seating areas in kind of the L shape. And the fan would only be over the L shaped seating area. I don't know why they did that, but... Um, most Hardee's that I'd been to as a kid that had that layout with that fan install and none of them ever had the same fan. Uh, one of the most important childhood fans to me, one Hardee's uh, right actually next to the hospital where um, I was at with COVID, right across the street from it. Now it's a McDonald's. It was a uh, Hardee's originally and then it was something called a Charcy's, which I've never heard of since, and then a McDonald's. When it was a Hardee's, it had an Enviro fan with a four light kit on it. And as a kid, I was obsessed with it. I wanted to know uh, how they got the light kit to balance on the tip of the motor. Because I'd seen Enviro fans without light kits, and I didn't, they didn't have a nut. They just had, you know, the motor came to a point. And I uh, tried to duplicate that childhood fan with different, you know, Enviro fans and unions and Evergoes and light kits. And I've gotten close. I think the closest one was in the... Uh, um, kind of hallway of the community center. There was a cane four-bladed Enviro fan with a five-light kit, and that's how it came. And it was very similar to that, but that wasn't exactly it. Anyhow, um, one Hardee's had that. One Hardee's had a fan to this day that I still haven't identified. It looked similar to those Lascos with the Sanyo motor, the top mount, that have like the plain vents. Usually they're black or white with cane blades. Um, it looked similar to those. But it wasn't a top mount, it was variable speed. To this day, I but it had the kind of the same bottom plate. Um, the switch housing kind of reminded me of like that Toastmaster with the belt drive motor inside that uh, uh, I guess people are considering them rare now. Um, still haven't figured out what that fan was. Um, but then there was this Hardee's that was in this suburb that was across from A&W. And uh, Unlike the other ones, this fan was on a really long down rod, so it had hung very low, close to the table, and it had no canopy, And uh, but it had a lower canopy on the motor. And so as a kid, and even as a teenager, when I went back and looked through the windows once that Hardee's was abandoned, what I always assumed was um, that they had installed the fan without the canopy, and, uh, and they just turned the canopy upside down on top of the motor. And so that's what I thought I was looking at. And, um, wow, I've been talking for eight minutes. It's a lot of storytelling. Um, it's probably because I'm, I'm tired. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do this video over because I've just been rambling. And uh, I'll probably post this as an outtake. But um, I'm going to try again.